So this talk is basically going to be uh, the complete history of human information in like four minutes. So, hey, we're going to try. All right. Uh, so the, the genesis of this is, uh, in, in my field, you hear a lot of this sort of buzz around big data. And what's interesting to me is people talk about it as if it's this sort of new thing. And technologically speaking, that's true. But from a historical perspective, people have actually been sensing this feeling of information overload uh, since about the dawn of civilization. So from the beginning, uh, this was the internet of its day. Uh, what you're looking at is a piece of clay that someone has written in using a sharpened stick, and it revolutionized the world. Uh, writing first emerged in ancient Mesopotamia around 5,000 years ago. Uh, it was originally used for trade, uh, legal documents, not so much stories and history. That came a bit later. Um, but it did allow us to commodify information. Around a thousand years later, we start to see the first libraries. Uh, now, these were very, very rudimentary things. There was no organization in them. They were essentially a room full of those pieces of clay you saw earlier. It was an important step, though, because now information is a thing you can store and a thing you can acquire. The question is, how do you acquire it? So in the ancient city of Alexandria, what they did, and this is pretty cool, uh, whenever ships would come into the harbor to trade, they would seize all of the books and all of the documents on board, make hasty copies of them, keep the originals, and then return the crappy copies to the sailors. And <laughs> this was a very effective means of acquiring data up until around 400 AD when Western society kind of collapses and we lose the library at Alexandria to the Dark Ages. Now, most people think of the Dark Ages as this time of almost no scholarly innovation, but actually, there was some really cool stuff going on within the church. For instance, a Benedictine monk by the name of Hugh of St. Cher got 500 of his monk buddies together, and they made the first biblical concordance. Now, the concordance is an index of every single word in the Bible plus commentary. Now, that's a huge big data job for that, like, for that time period, and it was very revolutionary. You get this really cool piece of technology out of the concordance, which is alphabetical order. It turns out no one had really done a strict alphabetical ordering until this time, and it was an incredibly important invention for what would come next with the invention of mass printing and Gutenberg's printing press. Now, there's some very obvious reasons why like, mass printing is good for the spread of information. Uh, you know, lots of books. But I'd like to talk about a really cool sort of sidebar on that which is when you have to print a lot of books, you need paper, and paper becomes very cheap. What that means for scholars is now that there's this cheap paper available, and you can take your notes on paper. Previously, scholars were doing all of their notes on these like wax tablets and chalkboards, like very short-term things. Once you have it on paper, you can store it, you can share it, and you can compile it into things like encyclopedias. Uh, this is a note closet, which is a Renaissance tool that you can hang your notes in in order to recall late, uh, later. That was sort of their means of dealing with that surge in information. Fast forward a couple hundred years, we the Industrial Revolution's in full swing. The year is in 1890. Tons of immigrants have flocked to America, and they're all spread out due to the railroad. And unfortunately, 1890 is a census year, and someone's got to count them. Fortunately for the Census Bureau, they have this guy, this young engineer named Herman Hollerith, who designs a machine to electronically tabulate and sort all of the people in America. His machine is such a success, he does it in half the time and way less money than the previous decade's census, which is exactly the kind of thing all of our companies would love to be able to write on their marketing pages. Um, Hollerith decides to take this thing into the business world. He starts his own company, and through a series of mergers and acquisitions, this becomes International Business Machines, or as we know them today, IBM. Now, I think most of us in this room can sort of visualize the data processing jobs that IBM was doing in the turn of the century. Um, the, very simple by today's standards, but what I would like to point out is at the time, these data sets were of the same unfathomable largeness that this big data stuff is to us today. And so, where are we now? We have all these solutions. We have our Cassandras, our Hadoops, our MongoDBs. And uh, we're solving this problem. But the problem has been the same throughout all of history. In a lot of ways, it's really just business as usual. Thank you.